Hi, this is National Master Dan Heisman, and we're here with another video to help you improve your chess game. Uh, if you haven't told your friends about the channel Dan Heisman Chess here on YouTube, please do that. I greatly appreciate it. Take a couple of extra seconds to do that next time you get a chance. I got a special request today to do some live puzzles, especially like board vision puzzles, as opposed to, let's say, the kind of puzzles that you normally see in a basic tactics book or something like that. So I'm here on Jeff Coakley's website, The Puzzling Side of Chess, canadatype.com slash cc slash puzzling side slash archives.html. And we're gonna try a few of his puzzles. Uh, Jeff Coakley is very good with board vision puzzles. What are board vision puzzles? Those are puzzles where the, all the pieces move the way they normally do. It's not fantasy chess but we have special requirements as to what we're looking for. For instance, in a double whammy is a lot like a mate in two, except that black doesn't get any moves at all. So you have to make two white moves in a row to checkmate black. And with a double whammy, the only restriction is the first move is not allowed to be check. So white has to make a move, it's not check, and then you make another move and it has to be a regular checkmate. So let's see if we can do some of these live. And as always, when I'm doing these kind of puzzles, when I first show the puzzle, you can pause the video and try it yourself and then see how your thought process compares to mine. All right, so we're gonna do a double whammy here in the archives, uh, number two. We're going back to season 2012. I don't know if I've done some of these before or not. If I have, it's been a while. All right, let me move the page a little bit so you can center it a little better. That's certainly not doing it. Let's bring it back. All right, over here. All right. Whoops, it's doing it again. I like it when the browser thinks he knows what you want to do and he doesn't do it. All right, so there you go. The, now you should see the puzzle there. Du double whammy number one. I'll read what he says. White plays two moves in a row to checkmate black. The first move may not be check. Check. Either move may be a capture. Black does not get a turn. Okay, let's look at the board. What are we noticing? Well, we notice that the... Um, the F pawn is pinned. So that means if I put something on E6, the F pawn can't capture it. So what do we need to do to set up the checkmate? Well, right now, there's a lot of pieces that uh, are blocking the king, but there's a lot of potential for pins here. So let's see if we can get rid of some of the pins. Can we play something like um, maybe knight to E6 first, followed by another move? Or maybe we could play something to allow rook takes e5 check. If we play rook takes e5 check, he could put a bunch of things in the way. So it doesn't, sorry, rook takes e4 check. So it doesn't look like setting up rook takes e4 check with any kind of, you know, preliminary move is going to do a lot. So let's see what would make more sense. We want to take his, his options away from him. So we want to put our pieces where we're guarding some of those squares. So, for instance, if we set up the queen to go to the h3 to c8 diagonal, that could be difficult. Uh, let's see here. We could, let's see if we can checkmate with the knight after setting up the queen. Can we, let's see, what pieces could check the king on the second move? The bishop on a3 can go to d6 and then, nope, dark square can't do it. The bishop on b3 can go to d5 and then to c6. He's going to have too many pieces to put in the way. So maybe we have to take the pawn on f7 with the knight and then do a discovered double check where he can't move or something like that. So let's take a look at that. Knight takes f7. The king has d7 and e7. Our knight can't move to double check him. And for instance, if we play knight takes d6 double check then the king will just move and it's not mate. If we play, let's say, can we play the queen to e5 at some point? No. <clears throat> can we get rid of a pawn and play knight f6 check at some point? Let's say we play a move like queen to g4 or h3. Can we set up a mate on the next move with a, another piece? I uh, don't see that being the case. So knight takes f7 is a very reasonable first move, but I don't see knight takes f7 
as being the right first move. How about a move like um, moving the queen to the sixth rank and then coming across? I don't quite see that either. Um, all right, let's uh, take a couple moves with another piece. If the knight, oh, the knight can take on e4 and then double check on f6. So that's got to be the answer. All right, so knight takes e4 and then knight f6 mate. All right, that was not so good. That, I should have seen that faster, but that's the kind of thought process we're going to go through. Let's take a look at the second one. All right, double whammy. White gets two moves in a row. Let's see, can we put the rook somewhere and then maybe mate with the knight? Um, let's see, if we put the rook on e8, can we mate him with the knight? Can we mate him with the bishop? Rook to e8 followed by bishop somewhere, knight to f6, not going to work. Um, how about if I <clears throat> move the rook? Let's see here, if I move the rook somewhere... Can I move the knight with mate? Rook to e6, and then the knight would check, but the rook's not guarded. So that's not going to work. Well, I take that back. The bishop on h2 is guarding some of the squares. So maybe it is rook e8. All right, so rook e8, and then knight f6 is mate, because the bishop's guarding on h2 is guarding the squares. All right, so the answer is rook e8 followed by knight f6. All right, let's go to the third one. All right, double whammy. Oh, this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, if you haven't seen this one, then I'll let you do it yourself. I'm not going to tell you the answer, but this is one of my all-time favorite double whammies. Uh, again, if you want to do this double whammy, just pause the video, wait to play, and make two moves in a row, and checkmate black. I'm not going to do it live for you. I know the answer, and uh, it's, it's one of the ones I like to give to my students. All right, let's, that's number three. Uh, oh, there's a series mate. We don't want a series mate. Okay, so there's the solutions. We know we got the solutions. Let's go back. We got to move our browser over a little bit so I can go back. All right, let's try switcheroos. Switcheroos are different than double whammies. In switcheroos, you're going to switch any two pieces on the board. And when I say any, I mean any. Any two pieces on the board and whoops, there goes that browser trying to stretch for me. You're going to switch any two pieces on the board and create a checkmate. <clears throat> you can switch a white piece and a black piece. You can switch two black pieces. All right, so here we're going to look at a switching for a checkmate. Can we switch, and it has to be a legal checkmate. Can we switch the knight on g3 with the knight on e7? If we switch the knight on g3 with the knight on e7, his king's in check. He can't take the rook. His knight on g3 is not checking the white king. This is probably an easy one just to show you what a, what a switcheroo is. Uh, this example shows how it works. All right, so knight, switching the knight on g3 with the knight on e7 is the answer. They're just showing different things. Uh, both kings cannot be in check, so knight can't switch the knight with the knight on e2. La 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 la. Okay. All right, let's do another switcheroo here. We're going to switch two pieces and put black in checkmate. Remember, we can switch out the black king. So if we can't switch a piece in checkmate, for instance, you can't put a pawn on the first rank, so you can't switch the queen on d1 with the pawn on f7 because you're putting a black pawn on the first rank, so that's not... A, in the rules of switcheroos, you can't switch pawns to the first or eighth rank. So switching the queen with the pawn on f7 would be very easy. We just can't do it. Uh, can we switch the white pieces with anything else? Can we switch with the rook on h8 and be a checkmate? No, we can't. Um, can we switch out a knight? No. Can we switch the pawn on e4 with something? No, because there won't be a check. We switch the pawn on e4 with the pawn on f7. It's check, but the king can just move. Um, this might be one of the ones where we have to switch the black king, and then we have to prove it's legal. Suppose we switch the black king with, um, well, what would we switch it with? Let's switch it with the rook on e1. 
No, that's not mate. He has king f2. Let's switch it with the queen on d1. Switch the black king and the queen on d1. Uh, the rook is checking the king. The king can't take the rook because the knight is guarding it. King can't go to d2. Nothing can capture the rook. Um, the king can't go to c2. Uh, that looks like it. We'll switch the we'll switch the queen on d1 with the king on e8. How did it get there? Well, the king came running up through like early in the game. He came up through d7, c6, c5, d4, e3, and came all the way around. It would take quite a few moves to set up the position where the black king has now been checkmated on d1. By the way, what was the move that checkmated him? It was moving the rook from the second rank or the third rank. So the last move that checkmated him, if we switch the white queen and the black king, was something like rook on e3 or e2 to back to e1 checkmate. All right, let's go to the next one. Whoops, going too far too fast. All right, there's the next switcheroo. All right, we have a switcheroo. Oh, I've seen this one before. But I don't remember it, so let's see if we can figure it out. Right now, the black king is already in check. So in order to have it in checkmate, I could double check him. Uh, what else could I do? Let's see. Let's. I can't switch the rook on h1 with the knight on d7 to double check him because then the knight on h1 would be checking the king on f2. So that wouldn't work. Um, can I switch... Um, can I switch another piece? Can I switch the queen on g3 with the rook on h8? If I put the rook on queen on h8, no, because the king can go to g6. All right, so I can't do that. Um, let's see here. Can I? Oh, the knight on g4 can move. Knight on f6 can move to g4. So maybe I need to pin that knight so the knight can't go to g4. If the knight couldn't go to g4, then it might be made. So I need the bishop on the diagonal, which means I need to switch the bishop on a3 with the rook on a1. So let's switch the bishop on a3 with the rook on a1. What would be the checkmate move? The checkmate move would be queen moving from, let's say, the h file to g3, either making a capture or not. And with the bishop on a1, the knight on g4 is pinned. Oh, but the king can go back to f8. Aha, so pinning that knight with the bishop on a1 doesn't work. Can we pin it with the queen and mate him with the rook? Ah, we can do that. So switching the bishop on a3 and the rook on a1 doesn't work because king can go to f8. So what we need to do is switch the queen on g3 with the rook on a1. Then the rook is giving the check, and the, and the rook's move that creates the checkmate was rook on h3 to g3 check. The knight can't go to g4 because it's pinned by the queen on a1. And the king can't go to f8 because the bishop on a3 is still guarding f8. So I think that's the right answer. Switch the queen on g3 with the rook on a1. All right, another switcheroo. Let's go down. All right, switcheroo. All right, I don't remember this one. Maybe I've done it, maybe I've not. We have to switch two pieces and checkmate black's king. All right, uh, what's going on here? White's king is not in check. Um, we have a discovery, but discoveries don't mean much. We have to switch pieces. If we switch our queen and our bishop, so the queen's checking him, the bishop on d6 can just take the queen on f8. So that switch doesn't work. Can we switch a knight? with the pawn on f7. No, because then the rook on f6 can just capture the knight. Can we switch something with the pawn on g6? Doesn't look like it. Can we switch? We could always switch the black king. Usually the way I do these switcheroos is I try to leave the king where it is and checkmate him. And if I can't do it, then I start trying to switch the black king. So I really have a two-step process. Process number one is leave the black king where it is, see if you can checkmate him. Process number two is if you can't do that, then switch out the black king to where he is checkmated. We can't switch the queen on d8 with the pawn on h7 because we have that rule that says you can't switch pawns from, from where they are to the first or eighth rank, so we can't do that. Um, can I switch something with the rook on f6 and check, check him that way? 
doesn't look likely because if I switch the queen on d8 with the rook on f8, then he could take my queen with the queen, and if I switch my bishop on f8 with the rook on f6, he's in double check, but there's no way... No, he's not in double check. I take that back because the rook on f8 is blocking the queen's check, but the bishop check on f6 can be easily stopped by queen takes f6. So switching the bishop on f8 and the rook on f6 is not checkmate. Um, I'm starting to think that I can't checkmate the black king where he is, and I'm going to need to switch out the black king. Let's give it another minute to look at that, and then we'll start looking at switching the black king. All right, what else could we switch that would be check? We, we can put a knight on g6. Doesn't look likely. We can put a knight on f7. We tried that. It doesn't seem to work. We can't create a double check by switching the bishop, because whatever we switch it with would block the queen. Can we switch the bishop and a rook? No, the bishop and a white rook, that doesn't make any sense. If I switch the bishop and a white rook, then the white rook is checking the black king. The king could either go to g7 or the bishop could take the rook on f8. So I don't see that. Let's try moving the black king. Let's switch the black king with <clears throat> the knight on h6. All right, so the king's in check, but... The bishop on d6 can just capture the bishop on f8. How about switching the king with the bishop on f8? The king is in check, but it's only a single check, and the queen can easily be captured or blocked. So switching with the bishop doesn't work. How about switching it with the rook on f6? That doesn't work because he's in double check from the rook on f2 and the queen on d8. And there's no legal move that white would play that could double check a king on f6 with a queen on d8 and a rook on f2. It, it might be checkmate, but it doesn't matter. It's not legal. You, it has to be a legal checkmate, one you could get to in a game. So switching the king on h8 with the rook on f6 doesn't work. It, what else can we switch with? Can we switch it with the pawn on h4? No, we can't switch a king with a pawn because it's against the rules. How about switching the king with the bishop on h3? Uh, then he's in check from the knight on g5, but queen takes g5 will get him out of check, so it's not checkmate. Um, how about switching both kings? No, then he's not in check. How about switching the king with the knight on g5? No, that doesn't work because there's no legal move for that pawn on h4 to have come from to check the king on g5. He can't come from g3 to make a capture because there's a pawn on g3, and he can't come from h3 to go to h4 check because there's a bishop on h3. So switching him with the knight on g5 would not allow a legal checkmate. How about switching him with uh, the bishop on d1? Uh, switch him on the bishop with d1, then the queen on e5 could take the rook on a1. So it doesn't look like checkmate. How about if we switch him with the rook on a1, then he's not in check. Let's switch him with some other black pieces. Can we switch him with the... We can't switch him with a pawn. Let's switch him with the queen, the, then he's not in check. Let's switch him with the, the bishop on d6, then he's in double check. But how would the bishop on f8 and the queen on d6 both check him? Oh, he could check him. There could be a pawn on e7 that could take something on d8, double check, checkmate. I think that might be the answer. So switch the king on h8 with the bishop on d6, and then white's checkmate move was a pawn on e7, captured something, let's say the missing black knight, on d8. So it was e takes, e7 takes knight on d8, get a queen, double check, yeah. checkmate, and... Uh, I think that's it. It's very clever. All right, we got a few more minutes. Let's see if there's any more in this group. Switcheroo. Oh, Noam Elkies. Noam Elkies always has tough switcheroos. Noam, Dr. Noam Elkies is a chess master who happens to be a PhD mathematician at uh, in Harvard. And he, I've used Dr. Elkies for some help in the past on some of my difficult problems. He, I, I try not to bother him too much, but he's a fantastic problemist. All right, so he created this switcheroo. Is it a, is it a switcheroo?
Could it involve some sort of en passant? Well, I guess not if it's a switcheroo. But maybe the en passant is the move. So let's see here. Um, if we switch the queen and the rook in the... It's not... Let's see. It, right now it's double check with the queen and the bishop. But we could have had an en passant be the mate. It could be he played e5 and we took on passant mate was the mate but only if switching pieces allows me to say that that's a legal mate so what pieces would i switch so that i could so that my move f takes e6 could have been an en passant mate right now it is but i need to switch things so it'll still be that's the problem suppose i switch uh the queen and the bishop so now my queen is checking him after the en passant take, puts him in check, but the f5 square is not guarded anymore. Uh, if I switch the rook and the king, I'm not guarding the g6 and g5 squares. If I switch the queen and the rook, and I play en passant, is that mate? Uh, let's see here. Switch the queen and the rook. White, how did white check black so that black had to play? Oh, that's the problem. The problem is if we switch the queen and the rook and black's last move was e5 and we play on passant mate, how did the bishop get to a1 to check the king so that he had to play e7 to e5? So what Dr. Epkes is trying to tell us is if we switch the queen and the rook and we say it's now mate and the mating move was was f takes e6 check that's illegal because the bishop on a1 um, could not have checked the king unless it had a move to do that and he he couldn't capture there what what else could he have played in that position we're looking at a position with the the pawn on f5 and the black pawn on e7 and the bishops on a1 how did the bishop get to a1 to check the king? If he was on a different square, he could have gone to that diagonal, but not on a1. Huh. So switch two pieces so black is in checkmate. Huh. It's got to be this en passant thing, but Dr. Elkies is trying to tell us it's not switching the queen and the rook because it's it would be an illegal checkmate because en passant could never happen because the bishop on a1 could never check the king. So what do I need to switch in order to do that? Maybe maybe it's all a hoax and maybe I need to switch completely two different pieces, but I doubt it. It doesn't look like that's going to be the answer. Um, it's got to be something to do with the queen and the bishop to make it legal. All right, so what I'm going to do here for a minute, I'm going to, rather than bore you with a couple minutes of me thinking about this. Let me pause for a minute, think about how the bishop got on a1, and see if I can come back and give you the answer. So let me pause my video, and I'll continue after the pause so that uh, we can think about it. Okay, well, so my idea of switching the queen and the rook, and then we played check, it's check, the last checkmate move was f takes e6, en passant checkmate is illegal because the bishop on a1 could not have checked the king. So I think the right answer is switch the pawn on e6 with the knight on a5. And then there was a discovered double check. Let's see here. Is that possible? No, that's not possible either because if you switch the pawn and the knight, then there's a double check and the, the knight could have come from d4 and it discovered the bishop and it could have come from f4 and discovered the queen but it can't do both okay i think i solved it took me a while the problem is the en passant is so enticing that i didn't want to give up on the en passant idea but actually i had to do that so let's pause the video again and go over to lee chess and i'll show you a board and show you what happened so this is the final position that we're aiming for in checkmate where we can switch two pieces. And I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna switch in a minute. Okay, here's our position and the goal is to switch two pieces and make it a legal checkmate. Right now black's in checkmate, 
but it's illegal. There's no way the bishop on a1 and the queen on f1 could be double checking. And unfortunately, even if I switch the queen and the rook, it's still illegal because if white played en passant after the move e5, let's show you what that would look like. Let's switch the queen and the rook. Put a queen over here, put a rook over here, put a pawn over here, put a pawn over here. If this was the position a few moves ago and white had just checked with the bishop, then black could play e5 and white would take en passant Checkmate. double check, checkmate. The problem is there's no way that position that we started with could have could have been in existence because there's no way a bishop on a1 can check the king without a discovered check and there's no discovered check here. So the question becomes if this is the final position checkmate with the queen here and the rook here, what do we need to switch to make it legal? And the answer, I think, is to switch the queen and the knight. And then the question is, well, how does that make it legal? Well, first of all, let's show you that switching the queen and the knight is checkmate. We've got f5 covered by the queen. We've got the g5 covered by the rook. The bishop is checking the king. The pawn is guarding f7. The king is guarding the pawn and the king is guarding e7. The queen is guarding f5. So this is checkmate, but how did we get here? Well, it turns out it wasn't en passant after all. A couple moves ago, it looked something like this. There was a pawn, let's say, either on e7 or e6. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, the pawn was on e7. That's right. And yeah, it had to be e7. It wasn't en passant, but it wasn't an en passant from the f file. It was an en passant from the d file. White had the bishop here. He got here earlier by zigzagging the bishop around. And now in this position, white played d5 check, black played e5 to block it, and white played checkmate. d takes e6 en passant checkmate. And that's how the bishop got discovered. It was discovered from the pawn moving from d4 to d5, not discovered from the other way around. So that's the answer to, to the no, Dr. Elke's very clever puzzle. So this is white, white to switch two pieces and, and put black in a legal checkmate. And the only way to do that, right now he's in checkmate, but it's illegal. Switch the queen, switch the knight, it's checkmate. How do we know it's legal? Because we could set up a position where it could occur. In fact, the position where it had to occur, there had to be something blocking this line, something that doesn't move like a queen or a bishop. White, you know, black eventually had gotten his king to this position. Maybe black's last move was king takes f6 or something. And now white played check, pawn here. Checkmate. And that's the, that's the checkmate to show you that switching the queen and the knight is legal. It wasn't easy. I had to stop the video for a few minutes and think about it. Once I gave up on the pawn coming from the f file with en passant and I started thinking of it coming from the d file, then I was able to get it, but it wasn't easy. All right, so for those of you that were looking for me solving some puzzles, we had a bunch of ones that weren't super hard, but uh, this last one was a real toughie. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. If you don't like these kind of puzzles, that's too bad because they really help you get better at how the chess pieces move and how to put the pieces together, how to create mates, how to do mating patterns. A lot of these things, even though you can't switch two pieces in a game or do a double whammy in a game, these kind of skills make you much, much better at chess if you keep practicing them, and they're a lot of fun. Where can you find them besides Jeff Coakley's website? Well, you could buy one of his two books, Winning Chess Puzzles for Kids Volume 1 and Winning Chess Puzzles for Kids Volume 2. In general, the puzzles in the books are a little bit easier than the ones on the website that I started with. Okay, again, if you could like the video or you can uh, subscribe, and best of all, tell your friends about it. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Bye.